Well, welcome back to Lucor Automotive Services. Today we got a hot little S10 in here for us from Pennsylvania. We dropped it off on Friday. And uh, try and help them with a couple things. They said they've got a driveline vibration and wanted me to set up the front end. I definitely appreciate you guys coming from the distances you guys are coming from to have me set up your vehicles. Big thanks to SRC for helping me get noticed. Um, I've been helping a lot of people with their race cars and street cars and daily drivers and normal stuff too. This is a super clean S10. Like, even the bed's like barely even damaged. Looks like it's had a full repaint, but normally these beds are beat to Kansas and back. Pretty cool little ride. Heck yeah, 83,000 mile truck. Nice tin uh, cowl hood. Some air motive bits, small block, aluminum heads. Heck yeah, demon carburetor. Very cool. Let's get this thing in the shop and get it on the rack, see what we got going on. So apparently this truck is a direct result of Billy and his original S10. This guy saw him working his magic in that old ride. Got some Viking coilovers, fully adjustable ride height. Big sway bar for street use. Power steering. And uh, he ended up building this S10 because of Billy's stuff. So that's pretty cool. Nice small block. Not sure what he's got stuffed inside that. Notch the K member for a little extra oil capacity. Nice clearance. This entire frame's been painted. Looks like he's had this thing down to the nuts and bolts. Flex joints. Dual in, dual out, magna flow, stainless steel muffler. Cal tracks. Um, I'm gonna say, we're probably gonna remove all of the shims, motion race works. Drive shaft. Nice rear. Quick performance rear axle with disc brakes. Viking dual adjustables in the rear. Uh, those look like Funkhauser rear slides. Nice sum of parts. You're probably going to want the Funkhauser anti roll bar too at some point when we get this thing hooking up. But I can see our engine and transmission are in a downward angle. And 
you want your pinion angle to be the same angle, and this one, the pinion angle is actually pointed down. So I'm going to just start by taking out the shims that are in here. Um, we'll make sure. We'll see what the center pins look like when you uh, put bigger shims in. The center pins need to be long enough to position your axle where it needs to be. So we'll see what surprises we have for us there. <clears throat> A nice truck man super clean really clean truck nice one to start with it's always nice when you start with them and they're not rot boxes it's a small block Chevy it's got a couple oil leaks oh, the Saginaw four speed all right Keeping it old school. All right, so I had to pull the wheels to get my U-bolts loose. And he's got a couple of shims. He's got a bunch of shim in this. So we're going to remove all of that and figure out where we are natural. And then uh, we'll figure out where we want to be from there. Those are bolted in, so I'm going to have to completely disassemble this rear and move the center pins. Mm, let's take off our U-bolts and figure that out. Pen bolts to go all the way through. So this has two three degree shims in it, or at least what looks appears to be two three degree shims, and I'm putting them so that they're neutral, which will give me the angle that the axle sits at, and it'll still maintain the ride height uh, where it's at. So if we need to modify it, we can take it three degrees down or three degrees up with these shims, depending on how we put them in there. Um, and I don't have to take it completely apart, which is a bonus. I'm on the leaf springs, that's going to make it difficult. I jacked this the wrong way. Well, not the wrong way, but it could have been done better. I have to pitch those U-bolts a little bit, so this is going to be a little difficult getting it back together, but we'll get it. And then we'll take a measurement, see where we're at. We're probably going to have to go up um, in the pinion. And we'll see where we're at. How can I set this down and move my jack position?
spit out. I don't recall having lock washers on. Any U-bolts from the factory. I mean, you're stretching the U-bolt. The tension on the nut is going to lock it in place. Probably torque these down to like 65 foot-pounds. Should be plenty to keep everything in place. Lock everything down. Place. Let's put our tires back on and we will check what our actual pinion angle is. And then we'll go from there. Alright, so these yokes are the nice machined ones. I take a square magnet, which is a good, gives me a decent surface to take measurements on. I've got one on the front yoke and one on the rear yoke. And we're coming in right around right around five degrees. I'm showing five degrees, four point eight. Somewhere in that range. Front one I'm coming up right at five. Minus 0.7, so we're at about 4.3 angle altogether. If I raise the transmission, it'll even my pinion angle to be more parallel with the diff. We're still going to be around a 4 degree pinion. But we might try this and see how it works. Really want that pinion to be down a little bit more. Pretty sure those are both three degree shams because that would make sense. So we're close. We're a lot closer than where we are we where we were. So we may run it and see how it vibrates or if it vibrates. Because it had a really, really weird pinion angle to it before. At least it's much closer. I don't have anything to do like a degree in the back, but I can change the angle of the transmission to give me to probably balance me out where I want to be, or at least close enough. So sometimes that's all you get is close enough. So we'll start there. Let me get the heads hung on this thing. I'm pretty happy with my pinion angle. I drove it last night. I've got a total equal, it's right at about 3.5 degrees. Um, and I think if we just remove the rear shim blocks, which will raise the back end a little bit, but if we remove those shim blocks, the difference in drive line uh, and angle of the drive shaft will get us probably to 3.1 degrees, which is near perfect. Um, so we'll see what he wants to do. If he wants to keep the ride height where it's at, I think it'll be fine here. He'll just have to drive it and make sure he's happy with how it operates, make sure he's happy with uh, the reduction in uh, drive line vibration compared to what it had before, which I think he'll be real happy with it. So let me get the heads hung on this. We'll get our uh, base alignment set up and uh, hopefully be ready to send this thing home today. Got my new adjustable hands for my heads. They're a little heavy, but boy, are they handy. They work real easy. You extend pretty cool. Wish I'd have known about these when they came out. I would, I would have bought them then. But it's what it is what it is. are all over the place. Caster's a little janky. And she's towed out. Back end's nice and square. We're going to leave that right where it's at. Ready lift. 
lifting them down, lifting the nose. Toes in a degree and a half, not too bad. That's pretty stable. Yeah, for street shenanigans, this thing would be perfect. So we're gonna bring this one negative. Actually, the caster's evened out, my heads might have moved. This one was quite a bit higher than this one. So we'll make sure those are even and we'll get our toe where it needs to be. Four nine five nine. So I'm going to add an eighth degree shim in the forward uh, control arm position. That should take my camber negative and my caster positive. Upper ball joint or upper control arm position, right there ish. That's my rear one under the header back there. adjustment on this side for caster. this side although for baseline it's as good as it needs to be but we're gonna make it better because that's what we do here comp and start over. Five toe in, 5.2 caster at negative five camber, and that is with body weight in the car. Uh, so it's time to strip this thing down, take for test drive. Within and just over an eighth of an inch with my tie rod end length, it was this one was an inch and a half longer than that one, which creates all sorts of weird bump steer issues when you're going through the range. So, 
I'm balancing those out. I don't care where the steering wheel's at. I'll solve that at the end. I'm um, assuming the steering box isn't, doesn't have a twisted input shaft. Sometimes when these trucks get into front end collisions, the input shaft will twist and it makes it really hard to get the steering wheel where it's supposed to be because it's got damaged parts. Um, but this one doesn't look like it was ever really hit. Um, and the gears lining up straight and my center link is square in the chassis now. And the tie rod ends are the same length. So things are looking pretty good. Um, my caster's within a tenth, my camera's within a tenth, and that is with body weight in the car. So, I think I'm going to lock down my rod ends, and that'll be that for the front end. And then I'll do a quick Caltrack adjustment. Basically, this is for the street, so I'm just going to, again, with body weight in the car, I'm going to take uh, zero slack plus a quarter turn of tension for preload, and then uh, we'll dial it in from there. I think that's uh, coming to the end on this. I do need to call Matt and ask him if he wanted me to... Uh, run this on the chassis dyno. He had mentioned that um, just to kind of see where it's at and uh, possibly See if any tuning needs to be done to the carburetor to make it better That's really what it's about make it as good as you can with what you got super cool car uh, very glad that uh, very honored that Matt decided to bring it to me from Pennsylvania um, We actually ended up storing his trailer in the backyard. He just brought it out last Friday dropped it off and then uh, I worked on it as I could through the week. It was a short week this week, so it was kind of hectic in the shop. But we're getting through it. Thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave us a comment below. Have a great day.